sometimes when we're working with real life situations, uh, we end up with data points that are almost linear or almost kind of like other equations that we've studied, but not exactly. In those cases, we'd like to come up with a way that we can actually have some sort of an equation that fairly closely models what's going on and use that as our best guess to make predictions. Technology makes this uh, fairly easy. In this video, we're going to talk about how to use uh, the TI-84 Plus um, in order to find what we call the line of best fit. So when you have data that's kind of close to a line, but not exactly, the calculator will be able to do that piece for you. Um, these instructions should work for either a TI-83 or 84. Um, the, the format and buttons that you push is pretty much the same. Other than that, if you do not have access to a graphing calculator, watch the next video where I'll go through the same exact problem using Excel. So uh, another option there. All right, so if we have a data set like this one and we want to have the calculator find the equation of a line that works best here, the first thing we need to do is tell the calculator the data points. Because this is a, a statistical type of function, we use the stat button as our home base for these particular problems. The first button that you need to do is click on the edit button. So you go ahead and choose that option. And then if there's any data in your calculator already, we want to go ahead and clear it. So we'll hit clear enter. Again, if you need to see that again, uh, if you want to clear a whole column of data that's already there, arrow up, highlight the list name, like in this case L1, hit clear and then enter and it wipes everything out that's in the list. The next thing that we would like to do is to go ahead and input our data points. Now the way you do this is very important. Um, the input values should always go into L1. And in this case, our input values are going to be our time, T, how many days we spent hiking. Um, our output value is going to go into L2. And in this case, that's going to be the distance in miles. So basically what we're looking at in this situation, we have Scott hiking the Appalachian Trail from Georgia to Maine. The distance of his hike is 2,200 miles. It took Scott 123 days to complete the hike. The data below is representing the distance D that he hiked T days after the trip. All right, so over here, once we've got our list one ready to go, we're going to enter each one of these data points. So we're going to have zero, and then you hit enter to go to the next line, 32, 47, 73, 99, and 123. Then we're going to arrow to the right in list two. We're going to put in zero, 590, 912, 1,212, 1,876, and then the end of his trip, which was at 2,200. It's real important in your calculator that the uh, numbers in list one and list two are the pairs that go together, because that's the way our calculator is going to interpret it. Once we've entered all of the values in, then we can ask the calculator to find the line of best fit, and so we want it to calculate an equation for us. Again, we use the stat button key. We're going to arrow over to the right, we're going to choose the option for calc, then we're going to arrow down to option 4. Option 4 says linreg ax plus b, and if you notice that ax plus b is really is the um, basic format for the equation of a line, and linreg is linear regression, which is the name of this process that we want the calculator to do. So we're going to choose option 4. Uh, make sure that your x variables were in list 1, your y variables were in list 2. We want no frequency here, and we want to go ahead and tell it to calculate. Um, on earlier versions of the TI, it's not going to ask you this information. It just assumes that you always put the x in list 1 and the y in list 2. When we hit enter, we're going to see these data values here. Now notice I've got uh, the general equation, so it reminds me what my general equation here is, which is y equals ax plus b, so a good linear model. And then it tells me the specific numbers for a and b that I want to put into the, into the equation to make my line of best fit. So if we come over here, um, option A or part A here asks us to determine the regression line rounding to two decimal places and write it in y equals ax plus b form. All we want to do is just fill in the values for a and b that our calculator gave us. So we'll have y equals 18.01x plus our b value, which was 9.22. So this equation here is our um, best linear regression line. The problem also asks us to write this function in function notation using the distance and um, time variables, so using D and T instead of X and Y. Remember that when you write a function, this value here, like D of T, 
the value inside here is our input value, so t is our input, so we are going to replace x with t. It does matter the way you do that. And then our output is the distance, so in this case it would be d of t equals 18.01t plus 9.22. And sometimes it's nice to uh, sometimes it's nice to have the x and y values because that translates over very nicely to graphing and sometimes it's nice to have the t and d um, formula because then it's easy to recognize which variable which numbers you should be plugging in for each variable all right now once we have this information we can answer a lot of so this is the best possible fit equation for the for um for our data now we can use this information to answer questions about the data set and use it to make predictions. Let's look at part B. Part B asks us to look at a scatter plot of the data and decide is the data exactly linear, approximately linear, or not, not linear at all. Look at the R value to validate. In my list here, the R value is 0.996. Now what is the R value? The R value is what we call the coefficient of correlation. And the R value is always going to be a value in between negative 1 and positive 1. The closer you are to negative 1 and positive 1, these, if you have an R value of negative 1 or positive 1, that means that your data is perfectly linear. It's just negative if your uh, data has a, a downhill decreasing function, and it's positive 1 if it's an uphill increasing function. The closer you are to 1, the better off your equation is in terms of fitting the data. So in this example, 0.996 means my equation is, or my data points are really, really close to linear, and the equation that I got is going to do a pretty good job of predicting based on the data values that I have. Because the idea is your calculator, it doesn't matter what points you put in, your calculator is always going to calculate the line of best fit, um, even if it's not very good. So if your equation, if your data is not really linear, it'll give you in a linear equation, but it won't be a very good one. Um, if the closer your R value is to zero, the worse it's going to be. I kind of use a general, if you want to go into more detail, you can take statistics classes, which will really go into a lot of detail here. But in general, you know, what I think is if I have like a 0.9, I kind of think of that as like an A, like 90%, and a 0.8, I kind of think of it like a B. And once I get to 0.7, I am start being a little shaky about trusting my data. Um, and if I get to like 0.5 or 0.4, like 50%, 40%, I don't know what's going on. And so my equation wouldn't be very good to look at. If the R value does not show up on your calculator, what you need to do is go into the catalog. You can get there by hitting second zero, and you want to look for the function diagnostics on. Click on that button, hit enter twice, and the R value will start showing up. Uh, you only have to do that one time, and then it will show up forever. It's just not, for some reason, a, a default function that's turned on on the calculators. All right, so I'm expecting that my data, based on this R value, I'm expecting this data point to look not exactly linear, because it's not equal to 1, but I am expecting it to look approximately linear based on my R value. Uh, let's go ahead and take a peek at the scatter plot. The graphing calculator will do that for us. The best way to graph the points is to click on zoom. Oh, my calculator turned off. Let's try that again. Click on zoom, uh, arrow down until you see zoom stat, because you want the calculator to zoom in on your statistics functions and it should start plotting all of your data points here as a scatter plot. Now you notice here the calculator did not do that, so if for some reason it doesn't do it automatically, what that means is you have a function in your y equals line, so you want to go ahead and clear any of those out so they do not show up in your graph, and then you want to make sure that your statistics plots are turned on. To turn on the statistics plots, hit second and y equals, and then under option one, see how it says plots off? Change it to plots on, so just click on that. And then once you've done that, you can click on Zoom, choose Zoom Stat again, and there's my data points. And as you can see, not a perfect line, it's a little bit wavy, but pretty darn close to a line. So I'm feeling pretty good about the equation that my calculator was able to come up with for my function. In this case, um, what type of an answer am I looking for is I would say that the data is approximately linear. because my R value is close to 1. So 
The closer to zero it is, the worse it is. The closer to one it is, the better it is. All right. Now the next piece, the next questions that our calculators or that our our problem is asking us is to look at and identify important pieces of information. The next pro this one is asking us to identify the slope of our regression model and identify its meaning in the context of the problem. In this case, our slope is always the number that's in front of our input variable. So in this case, our slope is 18.01. The next part of it, this problem asks us to identify the meaning in the context of the problem. Generally, just talking about this in terms of units is really helpful. Remember that the slope is always found by taking the change in y units divided by the change in x units, and so, or inputs and outputs, if you want to think of it that way. So if we go up here, what I'm looking at is the change in the number of miles, right, which was my output variable, and then I want to divide that by the change in time, which is the number of days. So if you look at it like this, miles per days, that's exactly what this number is saying, is that Scott was walking approximately 18.01 miles per day. Sometimes he'd do a little bit better, sometimes he'd do a little bit worse, but according to our equation model, the very best fit model, it was about 18.01 uh, miles per day. The next problem here asks us to use our model, and again, we want to, um, so we're using that formula that we found on the calculator. We'd like to estimate the total number of miles that Scott had hiked in 50 days. So just go back up here to our equation. We have d of t, so we want to find d of 50. So we're going to put 50 in for the time. Um, and when we do that, we're going to get 18.01 times 50 plus 9.22. So I'd like to val uh, evaluate that. Okay, if you hit the clear button or second mode, we can get back to a regular calculator screen and then we can just plug this equation in. 18.01 times 50 plus 9.22 equals 909.72. That means that Scott hiked about 910 miles in the first 50 days. And if you can kind of see up here, it's not a perfect fit, right? At 47 days, he'd hike 900, he'd actually hike 912, but it's the best fit of data that we can get for our, for our information from our calculator here. The next piece that it's asking us, but it's not far off. The next piece from our calculator here says, using your model estimate when Scott would have hiked 1,000 miles. Well, in this case, we want the output to be 1,000. So we're going to have 1,000 equals 18.01 times t plus 9.22. And now we just need to solve this equation for the time. The first thing we'll want to do is subtract 9.22 from each side. It's going to get us 18.01t equals, um, oh, just do it over here real quick, 1,000 minus 9.22 is 990.78. Then divide both sides by 18.01. And I end up with t equals 55.01 days. And that kind of makes sense. At 50 days, our, our equation was estimating we traveled 900 days, so it should be a little bit longer um, in order for him to get to that 1,000-mile marker. So um, again, stat is your home base here for all of this. Make sure that you enter your input and output variables in the Edit menu, and then choose the Calc menu with Linreg AX plus B to get the equation of, the, um, of best fit, the line of best fit that goes through the data points. And that should, and then once you have the equation, you should be able to use that to answer questions just like we've been doing for the last few, um, for the last couple of units.